Today we are going to talk about tags, and then on the next slide will be labels, and then we will discuss the auto tagging and the auto tag manager. So tags in AutoCAD MEP. Tags are what are basically AutoCAD MEP's version of text, except that they read the properties of the duct, and they're automatic. So when your duct properties change, the tags will automatically update. East Coast supplies a set of pre-made tags in our tags and schedules drawing. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to that right now. And here are the duct tags that we provide. And I did want to point out, because we've had questions about this in the past, on in particular for this duct link tag, why are there three versions of it? And the reason why there are three versions is because it has three different insertion points. So this would be uh, this um, tag with the left insertion point would be great if you had your duct length on the left side of your duct. Uh, the right insertion point would be great if the duct length was on the right side of the duct. Then of course the center insertion point would be great if your duct length tag was in the center of your duct. So some tags have multiple, multiple versions, some tags only have a single version. <clears throat> depending on how they're used. And mostly uh, what I wanted to speak about on tags today is how to create your own if you need to. Um, it's very simple to do. You can at the command line start the command to create your own tag by using the define tag command or if on the home tab of the ribbon if you go to the annotation panel select the drop down and then choose create tag. Before you start the command, you need to have some text in your drawing that will become the tag. That text needs to be a non-annotative text style and needs to be one inch high if the text is going to react to your annotative scaling correctly. Let me go ahead and close out of this tags and schedules drawing. Then I just have a blank drawing and the easiest way that I find to do this is just put some text in here. This is where you can set the insertion point of your text. And one thing to realize, the insertion point of your text does not equate to the insertion point of your tag. We will be choosing that insertion point a little bit later. But I like to make my insertion point of my text pretty close to where I'll have the insertion point of the tag. So in this case, I'm going to choose middle center for my text. Then I'm just going to put, you can put in any text that you want. I'm just going to put um, sheet metal webinar. Because um, the actual text does not matter. You need to make it non-annotative. So I need to turn off that annotative marker there. And it needs to be one inch tall. And there you have the text that you'll need to create your tag. Again, it's important if it's going to react to the annotation scale down here, that when you create your text, it needs to be non-annotative and it needs to be one inch tall. If you're just creating a, a um, single property tag, then your the value of your text, uh, the, what your text actually says, doesn't matter because it's going to get replaced by the property uh, property set definition value. If you're creating a multi-line tag or a multi-property tag, that is where um, you'll have more than one uh, property set definition value that you're reporting, then you need to make sure that the text differs in some way just so you can tell the difference between the two. And that will become a little bit more clear here in just a few minutes. So I have my text. It can, like I said, it can be anything, so I'm just going to change it to text here just to prove it can be anything. It's one inch tall. It's not annotative. So I'm going to come up to the home tab of the ribbon, the annotation panel, and choose create tag. Now it's going to tell me select the objects to create the tag from. In this case, I'm just going to choose. This is purely going to be a single text item tag. So I select it and hit enter. That's when our define schedule tag dialog comes up. 
we need to give it a name because tags are actually multi-view blocks. I like to name it, start the, my tag name off with uh, AECB and the reason why I do that is that was the naming convention that Autodesk implemented and AECB would signify a MEP block versus an architectural block. Um, if you happen to have uh, some ar architectural tags in your drawing, if you started with an AutoCAD architecture drawing, you might have that. So this will just help differentiate between those types of tags. Then I always put duct as my second word, uh, just because we have in our tags and schedules drawings, we have duct and pipe. And for this, I am going to go ahead and make a, we'll make a duct link tag. And then I like to always put tag after it. And then I always put my insertion point of my text. So this is going to be, um, I'll just call it center. Now you can come up with your own naming structure. Um, this is just one that I've come up with. I would just recommend that you be consistent on how you use it if you create custom tags. So we have a name for our uh, tag. So we come down here, we have one item selected, that was our text. We come down to our label and what you'll see here is the value of whatever we had in our text. Since this said text, this here says text. If we had more than one um, text item, then you would see more than one label here. You can make two different types of tags. One is just straight text. It'll never update. Its value will always be the same, which is not very useful in a lot of situations. Um, we do use a couple of those in our uh, software to call out the uh, connector 1, connector 2, connector 3, connector 4. And then I believe we also use it to put uh, an EC wherever there is an end cap and then a VD wherever we have a volume damper. But we're more interested in a property type of tag. Those are what read the property set values that uh, define your duct. And for duct, the one that we're most interested in and should be using 90% of the time is either EC duct system data or EC duct custom data. We're going to use EC duct system data for our property set name. And for our tag, we will go ahead and create one that we have already have available. We'll just recreate it under a different name, and that is duct length. And then we hit OK. And now down at the command line, it's going to say specify an insertion point. And this is where the insertion point that we created for the text comes in handy. So we can right click there, choose the insertion point of the text here, insert, choose that, and we now have a tag. If we hover over this, we can see that it's a multi-view block reference, and it now has a style. So what I want to do now is we have that tag. It's only in this drawing. I want to switch to the HVAC workspace. And I'm going to come down here to my annotation. Let me go ahead and make these a little bit smaller and hit OK. So now I, what I want to do is I want to take this tag, left click on it, hold it down so I get the little square of my cursor. And I'm able to move it around. Then I want to come over here and drag and drop it onto my tool palette. It looks like I accidentally dropped it so I need to do that again. So I now have that tag on my tool palette, so now it's easy to use the tag duct. So if I have a piece of duct here, I can now come over, hit this tag, place it, and place it right there. Then that gives me the link to that piece of duct. If I update the duct, you can see that the tag updates with it. So. Let me go back and create another one, make this one inch tall. I'll make this middle center. I'll make this, um, I'll make this say property one. 
And let me put a insertion point on it here, middle center. And let me copy it down. Call this one property two. I want to give it a separate piece of text in the name. Then I'm also going to go ahead and just put a box around these. And I'll put in this. Also, um, be aware that I'm doing everything on layer zero. So tags work um, just like blocks. Uh, layer zero means that the, whatever layer the tag goes on, it'll take those layer properties. I could hard code, so to speak, these items and force it to go on a layer. Then every time you use that tag, it will always go to that layer works exactly the same way that blocks do. So here I have some text and I have some graphics. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create another tag. So I'm going to grab everything. And I'm going to come in here and go to the um, define tag command again or create tag. And now you can see we have two labels here. Let me just give this a name real quick. putting in the underscores because you cannot have a space in the name. We have four items selected and now let's make this a tag that all it's going to do is going to give the uh, specification and the manufacturer name. So I want specification to be on top which is property one. So that's why you see it's very good to have uh, distinct names here. So property one is going to be a property. This is going to be a property. The property set I want to grab this from is EC duct system data. I'll do that for both of them, EC duct system data. Property one is going to be the specification. And property two is going to be the defaults, manufacturer defaults. And that's actually just called uh, defaults. Then I'll hit OK. It's asking me for an insertion point, and in this time I'm going to choose the insertion point of my graphics, the midpoint of the center line. I'm just going to say OK. Now you can see that the graphics also are annotative. So if I change my annotation scale to one to one, you can see that everything shrinks down. The one thing that will not happen though, if your text grows outside of the bounds of your box, the box will not shrink or grow to encapsulate that text. It's only going to shrink or grow with the annotation scale. So we have this. Let's grab and drag this over to our, our tool palette. We can place it over here in our tool palette. Now let's select it and grab this piece of duct and place it right here. Now you can see what I meant by the, the text not keeping with inside the, inside the bounds of the box. Um, it's going to keep its original size. The only option you would have is to make sure your spec names always fit inside your box or make your box larger. Um, that's unfortunately just the way that tags work. There's, there's no way around that. So we have our tags, and that's how you create new ones. So we've created them in this drawing. I would always recommend that you create your tags inside your schedules and tags drawing. So it would have been better if I had created it inside of this drawing and then saved it. That way you have all of your tags located in um, one specific uh, location. If we go back to our slide, uh, we've gone over everything here on the tag slide, so let's get into the next thing, labels. Labels are a little different than tags, um, whereas tags were created using text and multi-view blocks and using a, a defined tag command, a label is actually created using the style manager. It's different from a tag, it's style based. Whereas a tag is, I guess you can say it's style based because it, it's created based on a multi-view block, which is a style, but the tag itself is 
not created using the style manager. Labels are different from tags in that you cannot use a label through an XREF where you can certainly XREF a duct drawing into your current drawing and tag all of that uh, duct in the uh, XREF drawing. Labels are unable to do that. And the other uh, difference between a label and a tag, it is extremely difficult to move a label away from the duct object. They like to live on the duct object centered. You can do it, it just uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Labels, um, there's different types of labels that you can create. You can have a label report uh, the property set information that, that's um, attached to a duct, or you could use pre-made properties, uh, the abbreviated system name, component description, um, that sort of thing. These are some pre-made properties. Um, or you can have it, a label be a flow arrow. So in this case, this would be the AutoCAD MEP flow that shows the direction of air inside of your ductwork. Um, for duct, we don't really use it that much, and it's not to be confused with the flow that our software has set up, um, where we always say that the direction of air flow should be from connector one to connector two. The flow run arrows that you see here allow you to modify that if you want. Word of caution, you should never do that. Your flow should always go from connector one to connector two to work correctly with the East Coast software. So let's go back in here and let's just look at a couple labels. I can select this piece of duct and go ahead and type in label curve add. As usual in, any, in MEP, anytime you want to add something, it's usually the name of what you want to add plus the add command. So I'll just hit enter. It's going to ask me to select a curve. What I really want you to do is select a duct object. And then it's going to say, you know, what's the style name? And here you can just choose standard for now. And we want to only add one. So we're going to say one by one. Hit enter. And one. And we're just going to place it right here. Now when I select this label, I can come over here and change the style of it. I could have done that when I placed it, but uh, it was a because I used the command line version, it was a little difficult to see all the different styles. If I type it in again, let's see if we get this label curve add command. So now I'm using, even though I use the command line version, I'm able to access it on the property palette. So this one's a little bit easier. So now I can come in here and if I use this EC duct elevation combined and place this label here, you can see that it's a little bit easier. If I select this label, I can't really move it up or down off the duct. It, it likes to stay right there in the center. I can move it from side to side from the big start and the beginning of the duct but it will not move off of that piece of duct just by selecting this grip. If I hit the arrow, I can repeat that curve. So let me stretch this out so we can see that. If I select this label and hover over this, I can repeat and place new ones down depending on the option you select, you might find that useful. Um, I don't find that particularly useful. If you hover over the square, you're going to get a move option. The move option will just basically allow you to move it along the duct the same way if I just clicked on this and moved it. Not much different there. But the offset option will allow you to offset that tag up or down. I can't go sideways with it, 
and down. I can only go up and down with it. Now that tag is locked in to that offset value. So when if I try to move it again, it's going to stay that same distance away from that duct. It's just going to allow me to move it to the left or to the right. So labels are kind of the little brother of tags. They're not anywhere near as powerful, but you do have the ability to create them using property sets. You do not get any graphic abilities in the same way that you do with tags. I, I can't create a box around this and have it have that in the label. You can, however, assign a block to a label. Um, it just won't then, once it's a block, it will not read a property set. So it'll just kind of be uh, some dumb graphics. Uh, might be useful um, if you have some type of standard graphics that you want to put on a duct in some case. If you wanted to use a property set, all you need to do is just choose the use property set and choose which property set you want it to read from and then choose the actual definition. And then it will report that value in the same way that the tags will. There's some other options here. You can change the text style to anything that you want. You can mask the display of whatever is below the text. Um, if you use the layer key from the system definition, then the tag will go on the layer that the duct is on. Um, in our case, it went on a different layer because the uh, tool on the property palette had it go on a different layer. And what I mean by that is if I drag this over here and place it here, I can right click on this and go to properties and I can choose um, a specific layer for this to go on. Here I can choose my layer key style or I could just give it a layer override. So you have, using your tool palette, you have more control of what you want your, your label to go on. If we go back into our style manager, um, label styles are under documentation objects, label curve styles. And if we look at one of these, we use the layer key style from the system definition, that's for ductwork, or we can use the a layer override from system definition, again from ductwork. And when you go into your system definitions, you'll see those two options. So if I come down here, go to my duct system definitions, and just choose a system, and go into my design rules, you'll see a layer key style. And then you'll also see an, over, an override value. So that label will either take on this value or it'll take on this value depending on how you have these checked. There's some other options there also. If we go back into one and go to the offset, you can tell it to automatically adjust for a single line, a two line, um, some force it to a horizontal justification. So if your, your duct is straight up and down, the label will always be horizontal. If we come back in here, uh, the gap paper size controls how big the, uh, the masking is. And then it just has some um, display properties similar to all the other type of display properties that we've gone through um, in the series, in our webinar series the past couple weeks. So that's labels. Probably using duct, you're not going to use labels that much. Uh, most of the time we're going to be using tags. And the reason why is East Coast has created a module in our software that will go through and will automatically tag your duct for you. So you don't have to worry about placing your tags manually for most duct items. And we call that our Auto Tag Manager. So if I bring that up, the Auto Tag Manager is going to give you the option for to choose either rectangular, round, oval, or multi-shape items. And then you can choose duct, transition, elbow, end cap, or takeoff. And what you do here you, is you're going to see a list of tags in your drawing. 
these tags are populated from, if I go back into the East Coast options and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see a auto tag options section. And by default, it points to the EC schedules and tags drawing. If you have your own schedules and tags drawing, then you would point, you would set it up right here to point to that drawing instead of the out-of-the-box EC schedules and tags drawings. So if we go back in to our auto tag manager, for duct work and all other fittings, even if I choose the transition, if I choose the elbow, end cap, and take off, inside of this auto tag manager, you're going to see a general representation of the item that you're tagging. And then you're going to see these little red dots over here that are the general areas of where you're going to want a tag to go. So if I select this tag, um, this duct size, so if we look at it, it's duct, it's a rectangular duct size tag, it's H, so that means it's probably the tag is horizontal, and it's center justification. Um, so just looking at the tag name, we can kind of see how the tag is set up. Another reason to have a good naming scheme when you create your tags. Now, what's important down here is once I select that tag, it has some properties. There is an offset to that tag. I can have it offset to horizontal or vertical. Because this tag is justified in the center, and it's in the center of the duct where I want it to place, I have no offsets to this tag. I want it to be exactly in the center. So this is what this is going to uh, accomplish by setting that to zero. We have some flow here. Um, different values mean different things. Dependent means that if this piece of duct was reversed, then the tag would switch with it. And what I mean by that is, um, let's look at this tag here on the end. I can see that it is also set to dependent. So you see the blue arrows describing the flow. So this is connector one. This is connector two. If this duct work were to flip 180 degrees, this tag would then come over here and be on this side of the duct work because it depends on the flow. If I had switched it to independent, then this tag would always be on the left side of the duct even if the ductwork rotated 180 degrees, this tag is still going to be there. And since these tags are just textual items that display um, the name of the connector here, connector 1 and connector 2, I want them to always be on that connector. So if the duct rotates, I want the tags to rotate with it to the other side. So that's why this is set to dependent. You can set the rotation of the tag that's separate. Um, I know I would said rotation earlier, but what the rotation actually means is um, if the ductwork is going up and down, will the tag rotate with it and also read up to down, left or right, upside down, that sort of thing. So that's how you set the rotation. I have it set to horizontal, so this tag will always be horizontal no matter if the duct work rot rotates 45 degrees, 90 degrees. This size tag I have set to parallel. So that means that it's always going to be read from connector 1 to connector 2. You're going to see the size tag uh, read in that direction. So the, I, the text is always going to read from connector 1 to connector 2, no matter what the rotation of the duct is. And then it's orientation, up, down, or down, up. So um, maybe not quite as very useful, but it'll flip the tag upside down. And then finally, down here at the bottom, you can choose what layer you want that tag to go on. And so we have it set up to go to this layer out of the box. Finally, over here, we have a rule section. And what the rule section say is, when should I place that tag? For this particular tag, 
it's going to get placed on every single duct and duct fitting. In this case, the text is a little misleading because it's only for this piece of duct here. This tag, though, the size tag, is going to get placed on the start piece of a duct drawn or branch, on a duct prior to a transitioning fitting, and on a duct after a transition fitting. So the size is not going to display on every single piece of duct, only when these rules are met. And so different tags have different rules set up. The duct length tag is going to get set on each duct. So every single duct will have a uh, length tag set to it. If we go to a different fitting, so let's go down and look at our transition and choose our left set, we can see that that is going to be placed on every single duct. And in this case, we'd read that on every single fitting. The set arrow is going to be on every single fitting. So depending on the fittings and how you want your tags to show up, and in this case, every single one of these tags is going to, is going to show every single time. Now one trap that you might fall in, especially with this left set tag, is this tag reads a property set, and that property set is set to show a blank when the value is zero. So if your value is zero, it's not going to show anything, and that might give the illusion that the tag is not being placed, when in fact it actually is, and if you modify that set to where that set is no longer zero, then the tag will go ahead and, and show up. In order to place a tag, it's very easy. You come over here and you click it, and you just drag it to one of these red little uh, circles, and a tag will get placed. Then you can come down and you can set up your properties and your rules. If you want to delete the tag, you just select it and hit delete. Uh, pretty simple. On some things like uh, the elbow, where there are a lot of tags set in a particular spot, then it helps to stretch things out. So you can see that all of these veins are set here to the center. And this radius tag is actually set down here. Veins are a, um, a very specific item. When you select them, you're going to get a, a rule. And I would suggest, uh, I'm not going to go into it too much, but unless you really know what you're doing, I would not mess with the veins tags. Um, they're set, different tags are set to show a different um, tag depending on the size of the elbow. So as the size of your elbow gets larger, the tag that gets displayed um, varies. So easy to set this up. Um, play around with the rules to get the tag to display exactly like you want. If you go into options, you can turn on auto tagging. So with that turned on, I hit OK. Now when I place a duct run, so let me go ahead and grab a rectangular piece of duct, and I draw it, we can see all of these tags get automatically placed. So we have a length tag on every single piece of duct, but we only have an elevation tag on the start of the run. So let's go into our auto tag manager, go down to our duct, and let's select our elevation tag, Let's go ahead and come up here and let's just check this for now and hit OK. Now if we come up here and we choose our auto tag command and we select all of our ducts, we can see that the elevation tag went on every single piece. We can come back and turn that off by unchecking this and rerunning the auto tag we can see that those tags then disappeared. So if you, um, it's pretty powerful if you uh, take the time to set it up to your company standards. You know, how do you like to tag your ducks? Uh, you can get a lot out of this. It can save you a lot of time in your design by not going through and having to manually tag or place text on these items. On um, the auto tag manager, um, 
is certainly something that can save you a heck of a lot of time. Uh, there are improvements to it coming down the pipeline. Um, I can't commit to a certain release, but we do have additional fittings being added to it that will make your life even easier. So, you know, it's something to certainly play around with and, and see if you can get it to work um, exactly how you want it.